Guys, I'll tell you what, you always run into each other coming and going from the weight room, the training room, team meeting room, those kind of things. And I'm always an agitator and aggravator and those kind of things and aggravate you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm excited tonight to be able to sit around and just talk a little life, a little family, you know, not necessarily football, those kind of things. But I do want to start something with football real quick. Let's talk about your catch against Army last year. Uh, I mean, heck of a play call, those kind of things, good hands, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, how excited were you to catch your first college ball? I mean, it was definitely a, it was it was pretty crazy. It was pretty surreal. But I knew once I caught it, I was thinking pregame like, you know, if I get a ball this game, I got to make something happen. Like prove to these guys I can actually do it. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, after I you know jumped over them, I fumbled. But it humbled me real quick when that happened. But it was a great experience. I mean, I learned from learned, learned a lot from it. So. No, it was great. I'm just trying to aggravate you a little bit, baby. <laughs> yeah. it, it was a heck of a play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had that Twitter of you catching that thing mm -hmm. and jumping over folks, those kind of things. But uh, I was excited for you because you know how much I love you and I appreciate you. How about you? How about something special from last year, a reported game or those kind of things that you remember? Uh, Army guy got hurt, so it humbled me a lot, but it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? I'm that was a unique experience, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yep, I tell you yep. what, I wish we hadn't had the COVID thing and the, yep. I know Great the uh, cadets were there and those kind of things. Yep. That flyover and that kind of thing, that was a special yep. evening, yeah, those it was. kind of yep. things. Great experience. But other than that, let's talk about a little bit uh, growing up. Home, home. Let's talk about home, Pasadena, Texas. Let's talk a little bit about family and those kind of things, and some of the fondest memories and funnest, funnest memories you have of Pasadena, Texas, whether it's high school, uh, middle school, or even youth growing up. Man, just growing up, I just it was really all about sports. You know, my parents put me in baseball when I was real young, and I feel like that made me fall in love with just like being like adequate with sports and just having that in my life and just making it grow for me. Like as I got older, you know. I got into football really when I was in middle school, and I just, that's really what I fell in love with it, and I just kind of stuck with it and stuff. I say my, some of my greatest memories were definitely in high school, you know. Me and Matt went to high school together, and we ended up here, different JUCOs, and found our way here, and it was, we had a lot of great memories together and stuff in high school, so it was a great time. Yeah, I'm sure. And, of course, you got a twin in Jordan who was just here and those kind of things. He has a twin, too, in Matt. So, of course, <laughs> we know Matt's a medical guy mm -hmm. now, but I tell you what, you, t you two guys are some of the unique, uh, players from Texas we've had. Of course, y'all were teammates, those kind of things, and so I know y'all appreciate each other. And then the relationship that you and Jordan have developed, and yeah. then not only that, but the whole defensive line. Yes, sir. Uh, how did that come about, just being in the locker room together, or just rooming together, yeah. hanging out together, all those kind of things? See, man, Jordan, we, before I even got on campus, because, you know, I was a late guy to come right. in, so before I even got on campus, you know, he texted my phone, and they've been, you know, we've been good ever since the, the text message. You know, right. we've, been my, we've been locked in since then, so, in the whole defense line room, you know, it's just a unique room. You know, it's a it's a funny room. Every guy got a different personality, so it's a fun room. You know, Coach West, he's a good guy. He was a funny guy, so I love it. Can you can you uh, do it, Tommy West, Coach West? Can you do it? Can you mimic him a little bit? Let me see. You'd be thinking about Coach Miles uh -huh. or Coach Polly. Could you do that? A Why little are we bit? walking? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we walking? Everywhere we go, you know, we on job. You can't walk nowhere, so that's what, you know, it kills me with that every yeah, time. Y'all definitely are like one of the closest groups on the field, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, sure. Not, that's noticeable. Yep, yep. One of uh, Mal's uh, mannerisms is this, he goes. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> Anytime he's like explaining something or getting on something, he's always like doing that. When somebody does something wrong, he's always like raising his hands up like that. Yeah. We kind of bypassed Prattville. Talk to me about Prattville, Alabama. Uh, you know, it's a uh, small town, you know, everybody, you know, in Prattville, you know, it's a, it's a great family town, you know. That's why I love it here because, you know, Marshall Bears is like a family, you know, atmosphere around here. So, you know, probably, you know, it's not that big, but, you know, everybody close knit, you know what I'm saying? I know I got a big family. I got like eight brothers and like three sisters. So I'm big on family. So, yeah, you know, I got a big, I got a lot of aunties, cousins. I'm a big family guy. That's why I love it here, though. You know, y'all are just like a family away from family. So that's why, you know, I never had any problems here. You know, we've taught family back home, obviously, in Texas and in Alabama and those kind of things. You know, I think you know what family means to me. I'm at the age now that I don't have much uh, family members left other than my mom-in-law and some nephews and my sister-in-law, those kind of things, and great friends back in all been in Georgia. And I think the most important thing, I think you guys, I'm aggravating y'all being in that uh, training room sometimes is, is uh, do you get some Flint River mud <laughs> and rub it on your leg to get you better and those kind of things. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm very fortunate that I was born in South Georgia, uh, at Albany, Georgia, and uh, and it was a great li livelihood. I'm like you guys. I started new sports, played at all those kind of things. Yep. I'll go and tell you one of the neatest things we had is, is our neighborhood backed up into a uh, into a cemetery, 
And uh, of course, all the plots are over here to the south, and they still had opened up grass area here. That's where we played all our pickup games in the neighborhood. Yeah. And the first youth league, youth team I was ever a part of was the Sandlot baseball team. And my brother coached it. He was nine years of old. I was six. He rallied all the kids in the neighborhood. We were called the Crown Hill Spooks, the Crown <laughs> Hill Cemetery. And basically what you did is they came and picked you up on a bus, on a recreation bus. They took you to all the different neighborhoods and those kind of things. You played Sandlot baseball. So that was one of the most... Uh, important forming years of my life getting in the in the sports those kind of things yeah. we talk about family again about you know where you guys came from how about our middle tennessee family who's some of the funniest guys or the most respected guys you have or somebody you think that just is off the charts and ability and and those kind of things uh, man i'm gonna go ahead and speak on one of your um defense lineman malik was one of the funniest guys i've ever been around like sure. one of the best teammates one of my favorite teammates i've ever been around like this man every day came in with a great attitude and like instantly like if I was down like he would like pick me up say anything like make a joke and it was like all right this day just got better just because around this guy and you know he brought it every day like great energy great enthusiasm so that was one of my favorite ones. A guy sure. that I got a lot of respect for is Chase Cunningham you know he's a he's just he always smiling every time I see him around campus in the campus in the weight room locker room he always got a smile on his face he, you know he's a great motivational guy you know what I'm saying he gets me going every day so I got the utmost respect for that guy. I got you. And if you could hang out with anybody on the team for one full day and just see how they do things, who would it be? Ooh. You talked about Chase. Now just think of somebody else maybe that you have a lot of admiration for, or maybe because they have so much fun or those kind of things. Not only necessarily their work ethic, but they're just a jovial guy, let the hair down kind of guy. Do uh, you? Oh, you okay. can't, do you count? <laughs> yeah, you got to count. Tell, tell, tell us what you do every day. I yeah, got to practice. Like once you, once you get your free time, what do you go do? Well, you know, maybe off the field for a little bit. A little bit, but uh, free time is usually with my dogs and, mm -hmm. and my wife on the back porch. You know what I'm saying? With a cold, you know what mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I aggravate mm -hmm. you guys all the time. You're on my cold beer time, mm -hmm. those kind of things. <laughs> and I also aggravate you guys, say, I may not like you, but I love you. Yep. But uh, to make a long story short, is this is usually a long day for me. I'm a priest to be a part of uh, not only Middle Tennessee football and Coach Stockstill. I think y'all know the history of Coach Stockstill and I back at Florida State and those kind of things. Uh, but when I got out the field and was able to, to uh, get into operations and player development, my day is usually one of those, as you well know, when I'm uh, calling y'all doing things, just everything from making sure you're involved in your academics like you need to be, you're in class, you're paying your rent, you're getting your meal money, doing all those kind of things. And I just love being a part of it, and I love aggravating the heck out of all you guys. And uh, it's a great experience for me to continue to be a part of this game that's been so important to me uh, for going on 40 years now. Yeah, and, you, do, uh, you do a lot more than these people know. and. It doesn't yeah. go unnoticed, man. Well, I appreciate, appreciate that, but I like to say I, I look aggravated sometimes, like yeah. I say, and I look uh, not uh, enjoying it very sometimes, but I tell you what, I love every second of it. And like I, I tell my wife, you know, um, I said, if I feel like I'm not making a difference, then it's time for me to go sit in, near, in Flint River and fish and do those kind of things. And I don't play golf, and I ain't very good at golf. You're good at golf. No, I ain't me. I'm just like, you You don't, don't even play golf. Do you? Play what, what's your hobby? What's your favorite hobby? If you had to go somewhere. I mean, I like the, I like dogs a lot, so I like going to dog parks. You know, I got you know I got my own kennel back home, wide kennels. You know what I'm saying? So I like dogs. I like going to dog parks, spending time with my dogs. Gotcha. Okay. How about you? Anything outside of football, really? I mean, I like to work out and then really play pickup basketball. Me and Matt used to play pickup basketball all the time in high school at 25 Hour Fitness. Hey, don't sleep. I swear, we we was pretty good. <laughs> we used to play 25 Hour Fitness and just it was it was a good workout. It was a nice little exercise for us. So right. that's why we kind of got into it. So who like won that. nine times out of ten? Oh, if we play one on one, it wouldn't even be fair. I'd, I'd, I'd smash him. Oh, it wouldn't even be fair. He knows that. He knows oh, that. Oh yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, me and you? Yeah, me and you. Oh, okay. okay. I thought we were talking about me and we Matt. We probably no. got time to do that. Oh, now. you okay. talking about me and Matt? Yeah, I was talking about me and Matt. Me and you though. Okay. You don't want to see me. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do that then. So. <laughs> hey, search me up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Search me up. Oh yeah. Well, that's good. Kennel back home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever. If you could be anybody. In this world, who would it be? This world? That's a good question. Y'all gonna laugh at me? I'll tell you who I would like to have been, and he's not alive right now. Is Michael Jackson? Yeah, Michael Jackson. I'm not gonna laugh at that. Cool Coach Stock and I grew up a little bit of that. Okay. Michael Jackson, yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire, and of course the old mm -hmm. Southern rock and roll those kind of things. But Michael Jackson was such an entertainer, and of course growing up, I was young with the Jackson Five, those kind mm -hmm. of things. When he developed his own uh, individual thing, the guy was so creative, so good. And I don't mind telling you. Um, when Elvis Presley passed away back in the, in the 70s, there was a generation of, uh, of people that, you know, mourned him 
over and over and over again and still do to this day. I remember going to Panama City and sitting in Ruby Tuesday with my wife and they posted up there that Michael Jackson passed away. Mm. And uh, it crushed me yeah. because I tell you what, he was so instrumental. About the time we were in the 20s and 30s and he's playing such good music, so creative. And I would show you the moonwalk, but we're on turf right now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but he was one of those. Can you think of anybody yeah. you'd like to be? I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Sports, entertainer. Say, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because you mentioned basketball, we just talking about basketball, LeBron. Cause LeBron? I like, you know, I like him at, you know, off the court, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Things he do. So he's a, he's a great stand up guy. So I'd probably say LeBron. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, really just like rap. I listen to a lot of old school rap, like 2000 rap, some Drake. I like listening to Drake a lot. Yep. Stuff like that. He's relaxing and chill. That's what I like. So, that playlist. Kind of What's your playlist? Oh, what, are, what are we doing? Are we working out? Are we hanging out? Like, oh, there's count? a difference. Yeah, there there's is a, a difference. difference. There's there's got to be a difference. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm working out, I like to listen to a little, like, up rap. But if I'm, like, hanging out, I listen to, like, Drake and stuff. Like, I'm in the yeah. car. Like, on the drive, like, driving back and forth from home and here. Like, I listen to Drake. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. In the weight room, you know, I like, I listen to most of the rap. But in the weight room, you know, I like, you know, Lil Baby. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot of guys. A lot of guys are rap. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm just relaxing, you know. I like to listen to somebody like Drake, you know, some, some slow down music, you know what I'm saying, relax, relax. So are you one of those, before we get ready to kick off, before we send you on the field, are you just sitting in your locker getting intense or stressed, or what are you listening to then? Definitely something relaxing. Something I can See, just. I'm, I'm listening to some, some, some more high upbeat music, you know what I'm saying, right. get me going, you know what I'm saying, get in that mode, so. Sometimes if I'm, sometimes I really want to listen to music because like I just try to like focus in and just kind of block everything else out. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, my, my playlist is still on an old iPod. Everybody's trying to hook me up with this phone stuff. The shuffle? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The shuffle. Yeah, you still yeah, got the yeah. iPod, you, Yeah, still got it, brother. Still got it. Coach mm -hmm. Stock gives me heck all the time when he's out here jogging and I'm walking and everything. He says, I'll show you how to hook it up. Well, they did, but I still don't use it. You know what I'm saying? But I also grew up in that, that generation of uh, especially middle school with the Vietnam War. I grew up with the hard rock and roll. Yeah. And then I grew up with some pop music and then all of a sudden in Motown. And all those kind of things. So I love all kind of music. Then to me, it, and, uh, music if it just gets you excited and juiced. And like I say, there's certain moments right. you want certain things yeah. and those kind of things. Uh, but but I like it all. I don't mind telling you. There's some great stuff out there now and those kind of things. And here and then, and I bounce in a little bit of country. Yeah. And those kind of things. I'm still old George Strait, mm -hmm. you know, a little Texas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those kind mm -hmm. of things. But I like it all. What about um, if you? only had one thing left to do in your life to make a difference. You know, maybe in this community, maybe in this team, and those kind of things, if you had one day left, what is something you would like to, to change or make a difference in? Ooh, that's a tough one. Right. That's something that I kind of think about. If you I could see it like in life, just yeah, like just period. anything. I mean, like I say, I, I think all the time, and, it's, and it has nothing to do with what's going on in the last several years, those kind of things, but... Mm -hmm. As we all know, we always talk about uh, team sports and especially the game of football in the locker room, how it makes your family, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, you know, there's, it just makes you, makes you so complete with each other and those kind of things. I just wish everybody had developed that family attitude that we had to because the way we bleed, sweat, and grind with each other right. and the way we win together with each other. When you lose, it's even more important to be such a good family, you know what I'm right. saying? I just wish more and more people had to experience that and not make it mandatory to right. experience those those heartaches mm -hmm. and those good times. Because you know what develops a true relationship with anybody is not necessarily the championships and the winning. It's also the tough times that you yeah. go through. And as we all know, there's a whole lot of tough times out there. And I just get frustrated sometimes that people don't understand what that it's like, what for people, us to be a people complete society through. and those kind of things. You kind of understand where everybody's coming through, what mm -hmm. everybody's going mm -hmm. through. Yeah. And I know so there's just different, you know, different professions but I feel like you have to all be in the same boat, the same foxhole, the same huddle together. That's kind of what I would say too. I'd be like, I would just like make people understand, don't take it every day for granted. You know what I'm saying? Cause the next day is not promised. I would just tell people to always, you know, stay positive. I feel like there's a lot of negativity going around in the world, especially these past mm -hmm. year cause COVID on. I get it and stuff, you know, it's tough, but I mean, we're here on this earth together, like as one. And I feel like a lot of people just, if we just all took life, didn't take life for granted and just appreciated a lot more stuff. No. Right. You know, I feel like, you know, in today's world, you know, I feel like we need respect. Like, I'm mm -hmm. big on respect, you know. I respect others and I respect others respect me. So that's what I feel like everybody needs to do is just respect each other and the way to be a better place. But, sure. You're majoring in leisure and tourism. Mm -hmm. Where's that taking you? Where are you headed with it? I don't want to think too far. I'm kind of just like, taking every day, like, 
one step at a time, but I'm doing my master in business right now. I'm thinking about, you know, maybe coaching, maybe GA, and after this, just getting on my feet. But just thinking, not trying not to think too far ahead, you know what I'm saying? Right. Enjoying my last ride. Right. But if you could look in the crystal ball, where would you be 10 years from now? 10 years from now? Married, kids, Married. profession. Married for sure. House. Maybe my own training facility with some of my buddies back home. That's kind of like a... Me and my guys talk about it back home. We always we thought that would be something we could do, like that we would thrive in and enjoy, and actually like put um, knowledge into people. So you think you'll go back to Pasadena, or Texas? Uh, well, it just really depends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you and I both know it's the same old thing. I mean, when you get to college here, sometimes you end up just hanging out where you went to college for those five mm -hmm. or six years. You never really go back home other than to visit. Right. Uh, but uh, it'll all work out. Yeah. Do good. How Absolutely. about you? What are you majoring in? Uh, Legion and Tourism, same right. with us. So I want to coach one day. You know, I feel like. I just I had coaches in my life that helped me get to where I am today, and so I just feel like I can be a part of you know the younger generation life and you know help them help a younger person out. Get to Other than our staff here, who is a coach back in Prattville or back home, that uh, might have made the biggest difference. The biggest difference, uh, I say, Coach Bobby Carr, in my my senior year of high school, I transferred and played with him, but he made a big difference. He just taught me a lot, he helped you know, kept me focused, and he motivated me a lot every day to be great. So that's why. I, I respect him the most too, because you know, he How about you back home, Coach Major? Probably a handful of coaches, really, through my high school in JUCO. My O-line coach, Coach Morgan, definitely he kind of taught me how to, like, you know, be mentally strong, like, in the game and stuff, and, like, stay focused, stuff like that. And then Coach Parsons at Blinn, you know, he helped me a lot through the recruiting process and stuff, always had my back. Mm -hmm. And here, definitely Coach Mallon, Coach Polly, Stock, all of them. Yeah. They've all taken good care of me. Yeah. I don't mind telling you, getting back to Crown Hills, Crown Hill, Hill Spooks is now would have been Paul Eames, who's a recreation director. He's the one that came and just threw them bats and balls out there on that field and say, uh, Brocky Brock was my older brother, I told you at nine. He said, form a team, let's get it going. Mm -hmm. He's the one that kind of got us involved. Not that we were out in the yard playing and playing our own pickup games and those kind of things, but he's the first one that really got me involved in the, uh, the sports, and that was six years of age. You know, okay, and I remember him to this day because he hadn't come by. We would have continued to play our neighborhood games. Mm. I'm not sure I would have got involved in Dixie League or if I would have gotten youth football, those kind of things. But because back then, we were, my mom and dad both worked those kind of things. So it was really just us hanging out in the neighborhood. That was the good old days where you hung out in the neighborhood and you left your, play left your doors down. unlocked, screen yeah. doors open, yeah. and you played all day till the sun went went down. And when the lights came on, you came home. Your dad, daddy whistled for you. You came down to sit, sit down to family supper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that was always important for me. Um, what uh, let's let's hear let's hear uh, uh -huh. one of your favorite memories with Coach Stock because I know y'all played at Florida State together. No, y'all got no, you got some memories. You know. And I know you got one for this. No, well, there's plenty. Uh -huh. uh, you know what I'm saying. Um, but I'd say, basically, I was in there six months ahead of Coach Stock. He came in in January, mm -hmm. and I came in in uh, obviously the summer. But uh, we were already kind of setting our ways at uh, back then. It used to be a football apartment complex. Right. And uh, I remember him coming in in January and those kind of things. And I was already there for six months. And you kind of got in your ways as offensive linemen, you know, the camaraderie of the offensive linemen doing this and doing that. And Coach Stock came in there like he should have. I mean, he was an intense guy, an intense competitor and those kind of things. And uh, he came in there and I kept noticing he stayed one, one flight underneath me. We had the open door uh, plan at the co apartment complex mm -hmm. where, you know, it wasn't like a hotel. You step outside and you could look down there on the second floor or first floor. Right. And I'd be up and about watching the Braves late and those kind of things. And of course, you know, on college campus sometimes, I don't know if it's still here, a lot of times you didn't get out to 9.30 or 10 when things start, started hopping. Yeah. Yeah. But he was so intense and so, and, and so uh, driven to become that number one quarterback that he got there from uh, high school in the middle of the year uh, at Florida State. And I kept noticing lights going off about 8.30 or 9. So I did my own due diligence and everything. Mm -hmm. I'd go back and start yelling, stop, stop. He would never would answer those kind of things. And eventually, I finally got him out of there and gave him a little bit of taste of nightlife. And he still stayed true to himself mm -hmm. a little bit, what, whatever. But I said, babe, we got to have some fun now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, hey, we're out of season right now. I know we're working out. We're doing mat drills and mm -hmm. we're running three miles every other Friday, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, let's get out of bed and let's go, go have a good time. And uh, basically, uh, he had a good time. <laughs> and, uh, and that's when we kind of came close and those kind of things. But it goes, still goes back to not necessarily out uh, getting out on campus, those kind of things. It all started in the locker room, like we talked about. It mm -hmm. all started on the mat drills. It all started together, mm -hmm. all being teammates and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And 
And uh, now I have to admit, he one time decided that he didn't want to go out with me anymore because we're just having a good time, me and a couple of whales, oh, and he I'm jumps a, in there with yeah. us. And uh, we go to the crow's nest, and the crow's nest basically was a biker's bar, you know what I'm saying, the pool hall and those kind of things. So we're out there playing our pool and those kind of things. And, mm -hmm. They're back there doing their thing and that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, one of the biker's boys looks at one of us and said, let's fight for some fun. And I said, no problem. And he said, whoa, wait a minute, what am I getting into here? You know, you know what I'm saying? It never happened, as you well know, because we all put our arms around each other right. and had a drink or two with right. each other. Yeah. But that's one of the things he'll say. I, he's talking about get wide-eyed and those kind of things. Uh, it's kind of like when I missed that stunt at the, uh, the Orange Bowl when he got wide-eyed. You know, oh, yeah. and scrambled him, you know, and messed his knee up. So you know I'm responsible for the knee injury, and I, he no. doesn't let y'all forget that either. Man, he doesn't no. let me forget it. Yeah, you know I'm sorry. Every day. I heard him talk. And about um, and now when it, with the shoulder not doing well, sometimes he doesn't think as well. I always act like I didn't give you those concussions either. Now, I mean, right, yeah. come on, now. I just missed a stunt, mm -hmm. and I still tell him this day I might have missed the stunt. But if you had been faster, you would have been able to escape and scramble from that guy. <laughs> yeah. So that's just a few stories. And, of course, you know we could go on and on. We were together oh, yeah. five or six years. And, that's and, awesome. Y'all show together, too. Yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. You know, and then, of course, you know, uh, honored and humbled that he named Brent after me. Mm -hmm. uh, and in all fairness, there's been times when I was on the field with him when I got here in 06. And uh, Brent was still in middle school or whatever. And I'd do something crazy like a... I do, you know, in the staff room, those kind of things. So mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out why I named my son after you. And I said, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out, too. <laughs> and then there's times I said, you know what, I'm going to have to run you off. So well, you might want to check with Brent, your son, first, uh -huh, since he's right. my namesake, you know, those yeah. kind of things. So it's been a great experience, you know, being a part of his family. And like I say, with me not having much family left in South Georgia, we really love the way he leads, uh, you know, the way he uh, uh, treats you guys and what he mm -hmm. believes in the sport of making men out of you guys, those kind of things. And also he betters us as coaches and betters us as people. Oh yeah. I get doubt. better being around him every day, mm -hmm. as you no will doubt. know. No doubt. Great man. No doubt. Great guy. Great man. Well. What else can you think of? What excites you about this coming year? Ooh, I'm excited to see what our offense is going to do. I feel like we're going to score a lot of points. Yep. And I know our defense got our back. Got you, yep, sure. I'm, excited. I'm very excited. For Last year, best year, man. Last year, you best. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I know we kind of were off and on last year with those kind of things, and not you the COVID excuse, but um, all the games are important. But if you had to circle one game conference-wise, what would it be? All of them are important, as we know. I say WKU because, you know, that's a rivalry. The rivalry, yeah. absolutely. That, that game there is a big game. I would say, um, I would say UTSA. Because that's my, my last game in Texas. Right. And last year when we played them, we barely lost. And I, I didn't play as much. I didn't play as well as I liked it when I was in. So I'm definitely, that one's, that one's the one I got my own. My house people there too, so. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, they're on a schedule like we should be. And if you remember last year, the only reason we went down there is because yeah, we Memphis that one had up. to cancel. So we picked it up. They called us. Next thing we know, we'll load up and we'll come on down there. It right. didn't turn out good, but those kind of things. I'm like you with WKU. It's always a rival. Um, but also the... When they're played later, they become even more important, as you well know. Because mm -hmm. usually when everybody's playing those last two or three weeks, you're either playing for a chance to be in the conference championship or win your side of the division, those kind of things. So, Bowl game. What about um, in the past? What are some of the best games you remember or still excite you, the fondest memories since you've been here when we played? It was definitely FAU my first year here, the 2018 season. I remember we were in all black. I didn't play, but... We went for two. Coach Shock said we're going for two. I said immediately as soon as he said that we were going for two, I knew we were going to win. I didn't know how we were going to do it or what. But once he caught that touchdown, he did that touchdown pass and he caught it, it was, the whole stadium went crazy. Yeah, I'll never crazy. forget that. Yeah, crazy and then, then Michigan and the Big House, definitely, definitely, um, that was probably the, that was definitely the loudest stadium I ever played in. Because, I mean, we was backed up inside the 10. I mean, you couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear a clap. You couldn't hear nothing. Straight, loud noise, that's all. Yep. Yeah, they do a big, great job. What about you? You think of one? I say uh, a game I Rice last year when um, Jalen Jackson cornerback blocked the field goal, right. and then when they uh, when they missed it off the little doink, the little doink play, that was a crazy right. experience. Was yeah. that three doinks, right? Three doinks. Three doinks and out. Yeah, that was a crazy game for sure. It was. It was yeah. crazy. And Michigan no for question. sure. Michigan was a great experience. Yeah. yeah. You know, I love I love the atmosphere there. It was, I think they had like a hundred hundred and ten you know, yeah. people. So. Good experience, yeah. you know. Sure. Why they called the big house? Uh -huh. What about a heartbreaking loss since you've been here? Ooh, no, no doubt the conversation. Twenty eighteen, yeah. I didn't even play, and that that hurt me. Yeah. I mean, just be, seeing all the guys hurt and stuff. Yeah, that was a tough one. That was my redshirt year, but since before that, 
or after that, after my red shirt year. Let me think about this. Mm. So well, that was tough. Why you thinking about it? It's tough because we know we beat them the week before, mm -hmm. and they had to come back to us. And like I say, um, we had a chance to to give it back to our offense a little bit, and we uh, kind of stumbled a little bit and had a hiccup there late in the game. So it was very disappointing, as you well know, and it's tough to overcome. And like Coach Stock always says, uh, when you lose, it's got to hurt. Really, mm -hmm. really got to hurt. And then when you win, you got to make sure you enjoy it while you can. And you got to come back down to earth. So that was a tough. Uh, Mm -hmm. A week of, or that Saturdays I can remember. Yeah, another one that I can remember is 2019 at North Texas, and they y'all y'all caused that fumble. Yep. And we went down and scored, and they had that kicker trying to kick that field goal to win. Yeah. That I want to hurt because yep. I feel like we had that one but secured we had, we for sure. Secured. If we were going to overtime, it was it was going to be us because we had momentum. Yep. That was definitely that one hurt. Hurt tough loss. That hurt more than that conference championship though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That one was tough. I hate yeah. to see those guys go out like that because that was that was a good group. Yep. They, taught, they, they really did like teach us how to work and stuff like Brent, Brew, yeah, all those guys. Yeah. D. Harris. D. Harris, uh, Malik, there's a lot of guys mm -hmm. that I, I can mention. Mm -hmm. like, great team. That, they, that was a good year for me just to learn, mm -hmm. you know, just sit back and, you know, they led by example. That's, you know, what I'm saying? they helped me become the first line of the day. So I, pre I appreciate everybody, you know, yeah. that paid the way. So I agree with you. A lot of character, oh, yeah. culture that we try to get mm -hmm. here. Those kind of great leaders, great guys. You know I feel like saying? we're getting that culture back too. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like I, these last few years, feeling. you know, yep. last year with COVID, but okay. this year I feel like it's starting to pick up definitely. I feel okay. like we're a lot closer than last two years. Well, it's like we out. say in this profession and every level. I mean, sometimes the mo most talented teams are the closest teams find a way to take care of things. Mm -hmm. right. What about um, if you could spend uh, time with somebody in your life, spend one more day with them and talk to them, who would it be and why? Mm -hmm. It can be family, it can be anybody that's important uh, or somebody that's in, impressed you? I mean, you mentioned LeBron a while ago of idolizing yeah. him a little bit, but could it be anybody? Mm. Uh, I don't mind telling you, it would be my daddy. Uh, yeah. He passed away my sophomore year when I was at camp uh, of a heart attack and those kind of things. And uh, not being on a downer, but he was such a great man, you know what I'm saying? And it's like anything else, sometimes you don't appreciate your parents till they're gone, those kind of things. But mm -hmm. I could spend one more day with him uh, I'd let him, ch I'd chat and be with him, those kind of things, because I was always the baby boy playing all sports. He's always so proud of me. My older brother didn't quite get involved in sports like he used to with those kind mm -hmm. of things. But if I could spend one more day with anybody, um, you know, uh, it would be him, my daddy, Uli Brock. And it, would, uh, it would probably be my, my grandpa. He uh, passed away when I was real young, but we were, I had f fond memories of us just always together, always hanging out. He'd always cook me breakfast in the mornings and I'd stay over on the weekends. And just some of those times, I, I just if I spent one day with them, it'd be great again. You know, we used to always go to the, uh, we used to go to a beach and we'd put this quarter under a rock and we'd go over there and pick it up and see if the quarter was there each time. So just some of those memories are great times, for sure. Wow, that's a that's a uh, hard question for me because you know I, just, I haven't really lost anybody. You know, right. But one person I could say that I probably want to spend a day with is probably uh, somebody. I, I don't want to say LeBron, but you know, it's a lot of. I say like an athlete like that, yeah, yeah, athlete like be, LeBron, you know, guys like just to, you know, just to show me, you know, just to get gain some knowledge, you know. So right. I, I, I see their everyday life and how they yeah, work and stuff. You know, yeah, stuff like that, so. I would I would want to do that too. If I had to pick like a probably like an athlete, it'd be like Pat Mahomes or like Steph yeah, Curry. Like, yeah, just yeah, see yeah. how they work. Still no guys, they're auto guys. They there for a reason, so mm -hmm. just gain knowledge from them would be great. So, what has impressed you guys more about Division One football? You didn't anticipate when you came from high school whether it's travel or this or anything or just like the mature level like each year like that I played I feel like I've grown and learned more about the game and it's like yeah it takes like everybody has a skill but it's what you're beyond that like your matureness your level of IQ on the field stuff like oh. that like how you know what they like to do coverages you know stunts all that I kind agree. of stuff I agree you know I can't I can't uh, I feel like I came to college as a, you know I was I knew football, but I didn't really know football. So mm -hmm. it was a uh, even the, the, the uh, speed of the game. You know, everything was different, yeah. new for me. So, mm -hmm. but everything else, you, you know, it's the same. I feel like, but you definitely gotta humble yourself and you know get on track with things. So the speed of the game too. Yep. The speed so, of the game is once you adjust to that, it's once, like that's one of the bigger differences yep. for sure. So, yep. Practice too. Practice. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Practice. Yeah. Yeah. College, I learned D one playing D one playing D one college football. You got to practice like you're gonna play. So. Right. Yeah, I practice like a pro every day, so that's, that's, like, that's important. You practice like a pro every day. And it's like Stark says, yeah. So. Mm -hmm.
I get Coach Stock, Coach West, they preach that every day. Yeah. Y'all guys press like a pro. So right. that's what I try to do. Right. You just won the lottery. Mm. Just mm -hmm. won the lottery. Investing, not doing nothing done with it, but I'm going to spoil myself a little bit and take care how of my spoil, parents. How would you spoil yourself? What, how would you spoil yourself? <sighs> New car? Got to be a car. Got to be a car. Yeah. Uh, you, you think a car? Yeah, yeah. What can? Trailhawk. I'm thinking a, a Porsche, a, four, a four door like Porsche, like maybe a SUV type, a sport mode one. I'm something that can go. Yeah, I can you know what I'm saying? Obviously convertible. Yeah, convertible. I, I, something I, I that can, can go. Yeah. What no about big, you? What would no, you? What would no, you do? No big, no big truck. Nah, not a big truck. I'm more of a car guy. Everything's I'm a, big in Texas. I'm a, I'm a car guy though. I'm a, I'm a big car guy. What about you? What would you do? Win the lottery? Win the lottery. I would probably, in all fairness. Um, Share it with my family, mm -hmm. share it with some friends, um, make sure that um, my wife continue to be taken care of, but I'd probably go get me a house somewhere in the mountains and just kind of hang out and do those kind of things. Oh, but, uh, yeah, that sounds like fun. I wouldn't splurge sure. on it so much. As Coach Stock said, one thing he gives me heck about is I'm probably the only guy that trades a car every two or three years when <laughs> I finally got out, of, got out of college. He says, all you're doing is just increasing your payments. <laughs> <laughs> Pay off a car. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I've probably had about all the vehicles I've worn. I didn't have one growing up, so that was kind of my deal. Yeah. Uh, when I, when my daddy passed away, I got the old blue truck mm -hmm. from Albany, Georgia. I had it at Florida State and those kind of things. And then when I had the opportunity to, to get myself a nice car out of college, it was a Cougar XR7 with T-tops. You know what I'm saying? Back mm -hmm. then with the cassette player and 8-track. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what that is. Um, yeah, yeah, probably not. like a disc? Or the, the little no, video. Oh, jeez. I, I tell you, I still got some of the house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what it is, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all don't know, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we just punch a button now and mm, it just Bluetooth. all starts playing yeah. or whatever. But uh, but I've had everything from a nice sporty ride to got into the truck thing. And now, of course, uh, I'm in the Jeep thing, as you guys yep. see. Yep. That was the last thing I told my wife is getting our age when we're getting it. I just like to have me a toy, and it was the Jeep. And of course, I got that push button top that comes off. Mm. So I wouldn't invest in any kind of cars or whatever. But uh, I take care of folks and those kind of things yeah. and make sure people that needed it, uh, I would do the right things with it. What would you do? I'd definitely spoil myself, but you know, I'm a giving person, you know, so I take care of, you know, family members. But they have to earn it in a way too. I just ain't giving it. Yeah, you know, so it's, all, it's tight you circle. Got, yeah, you gotta yeah. earn that cheese, you know what I'm saying? So and then I bought the the car I gotta give me a track hawk. Yeah. Track hawk. Something that can move. With, the with the forges on it, you know what I'm saying? Some 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 nice gold paint, you know what sure. I'm saying? Some nice. You can't miss rounds. it. When I, when I pull up, you ain't going to miss me. You know <laughs> so. All right. Some That's musician cool. or some group comes up to you and says, now I'm going to give you free tickets for the rest of your life to my concert, so I want you to travel with me. Who would it be? Right. Like any? Any. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to let you go first on this one because I know you. if you're asking us, you got a, you got a band. You got I, mean, I got plenty of bands now, like I say. But it would probably be the Eagles. The Eagles. As much as I told you I'd like to be Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and got in touch with Earth, Wind & Fire, it'd probably be the Eagles. Such a unique group. Started in the 70s and uh, those kind of things. And, of course, the Hotel California album was one of the best-selling albums that there ever was. Long play mm -hmm. and those kind of things. I had a chance to see them, matter of fact, in Houston. Yeah. In your neck of the woods. This is funny because uh, me and a couple of college buddies and Coach Stock couldn't go at the time. But we met in Houston when they were doing their tour, Hotel California tour. And we get out there, and they just all came back together. And, of course, Glenn Fry has passed away, the lead singer, so they have a son, Deacon Fry, mm -hmm. who took his place, which is which is pretty unique. Right. And then they had Vince Gill be a part of that scenario. And they put on a two-and-a-half, three-hour show. But what's so funny is such a great a great atmosphere in those kind of things. And then playing in that basketball arena, which I still think some of the best concerts, is small venues, as you well know. But... When it was all said and done, that's about the time COVID was just getting hit and was fixing to shut down this country. And the last thing that that uh, those guys said, hey, we really appreciate y'all uh, coming to this because I'm not sure what's going to happen after tomorrow. Well, to make a long, long story short, tomorrow everything was canceled and kind of shut down. Yeah. We were lucky to get back from Houston. Yeah. But if I could travel to anybody and be a part of their, not maybe some of their early years, so they, a lot of bands you well know, did some stuff that I never would have got into. Yeah. But uh, eventually they that. matured like you talk about in any mm -hmm. profession. And I just thought they were such a unique man. Not playing good music, but just performing and just holding people captive and those kind of things would be. I don't even know who I would choose. I say, uh, I like Lil Baby and his uh, label a lot, uh, 4PL. I, like, I just like all, they, all his artists. You know, I, I just listen to all them boys. So I'd say them. That's a group I'd probably be. I'd say like Drake with OPL. Yeah. 
That would be fun to be a part of for sure. Yeah. Like go to a concert with him, went backstage and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I actually been to a little baby concert in Nashville, so that was a fun. Experience. Where was it at? I can't. I don't even know the uh, place. I don't even remember the name, but it was a. Uh, it was like in a. Um, I don't know. It wasn't a club, but it was like a building with just like, like a warehouse, space, like, yeah, yeah like a, okay. with a stage and still so. a small venue though. Yeah, small venue. Yeah. Up, but I it agree. was a great experience yeah. though. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, I've been to those concerts before where you're sitting in a big stadium or whatever, and you have to watch the video yeah. to see it. But like I say, that small basket venue with Eagles, and had a chance to see Chicago and Earth, Wind and Fire, the uh, amphitheater in Nashville too, and that was a small venue, sitting in chairs, mm -hmm. and sitting on the grassy area. So that was pretty unique. It's a good deal. Fix and retire. Where are you gonna retire at? Regardless of family, empty nest or anything, where would you retire at? Got to be the beach, buy some water. Got to be. You, know, you got beaches in Texas, so you're going to be in Texas beaches? Or you no, 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 not Texas beaches. We're going to some, some, some see-through water where I can see my feet. Yeah. Maybe uh, probably, probably Florida. I don't know where out in Florida, but somewhere in Florida maybe, or yeah. maybe like the Bahamas, somewhere, yeah. somewhere cool. I was going to yeah. say somewhere Bahamas. Cool. Yeah. Bahamas would be a great spot. Somewhere I, somewhere I can get away for sure. Get away. Right. Isolate yeah. myself, be with the people I love, nice all that scenery. stuff. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I'm the same way, beach, but I would still like that little house. Mountain the mountains. House. I'd like to have two. Yeah, beach now house. Now i got to win the lottery. Yeah, right. I'd like to be able to come and go, because mm -hmm. I mind telling my wife and I, uh, as long as we're productive up here, if we do retire, especially by health issues, I want to stay near Vanderbilt, but we'd like to keep our house here and then have the chance to the beach down in Panama City. Gulf of Mexico, Panama City, Destin, 38, yep. those yep. kind of things. And of yep. course, I think any time you get into the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, you can't go wrong. And the yeah. water changes sometimes. A lot of times it's much clearer. Mm -hmm. And I had a chance at a 10-year anniversary. You took me to Jamaica, and it was one of the neatest things I ever experienced. Because I'm not a traveler. Yeah. But we were in an all-inclusive thing. And I'll tell you a quick story on that. You're all-inclusive in Jamaica, and you eat all day. You can drink all day. Yeah. You don't even have to have money on you, those kind of things. You paid that money up front. Like a little wristband. So all of a sudden, the Red Stripe is their, is their beer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know I'll talk more about beer, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Red Stripes are beer. So after about two or three days, it was, we were going to be there seven days, six nights. About the third or fourth day, you know me, I'm a Coors Light, light kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I looked at the guy and said, um, sir, is there anywhere I can get like American beer or anything? He says, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, just go out to get here, man. Take a right. <laughs> go by there. They'll be down there selling beer. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think anything about that. Uh -huh. So I said, I appreciate you, sir. So they let you go out the gate. They tell you to be careful. As you well, not that Jamaica's all that bad, but you know they wanted to keep you right around the exclusive area. Yeah, so I go there and I get to the I get to the place and there's a gentleman sitting there with the with the Bud Light. I said, Oh wow, this is going to be great. You know, I'm talking about you know I'm talking about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you know what stuff costs now. But uh -huh. I go out there back then. Back then, you probably get a case of beer for 7.99 in the states. Man. So I go up there and I said, Sir, I'd like to purchase some of that Bud Light. And he says, oh, Man, how much you got on him, man? And I says, I got a lot on me, but I don't want, you know, he says, okay, $60, man. I said, ooh, I'll take it. Because I was just so tired of the red stripe. It was so heavy and those kind of things. I, mean, so I paid $60 for a case of beer, <laughs> you know, almost 30 years ago, those kind of things. Oh, but, man. And the reason I bring that up is because Jamaica was a beautiful country. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. I wish, if we do ever do a thing again, I'd like to do that and those kind of things. So, sure. So, what do you think? Where are we headed? We're going to be all right? Where? Here? Football. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Gotcha. I feel like we're going to turn a lot of eyes. I feel like we kind of got like a little chip on our shoulder here this year. Yeah. People don't really, uh, people really don't expect much shoulder. of us, but it's yeah. okay. We like that. We're going to wake them up. Mm -hmm. wake we them like up. that. For sure. Well, and things have been unique, too, with this mm -hmm. transfer portal and stuff. Yep. And I think we've handled it well. I think you guys uh, are kind of Coach Stock's culture, accept them. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, learn yep. how you know, that turn to keep and to trust with us, those kind of things. But I'm excited about it because I know – not only what we went through last year with the COVID, but also, uh, you know, in the years we just hadn't been back. As a matter of fact, a couple of guys asked me, how did they get one of these? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, fellas, that's because of what y'all do. And this one's kind of old and tarnished, so we need another one yeah, of we these. Need, we need a new And this is what y'all are excited about, mm -hmm. too. Yes, sir. Well, so, uh, but y'all have done a great job of accepting some of the new guys, you know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody's back in the boat. They had another year eligibility, and mm -hmm. I'm like you. I think one thing I learned by watching us in the spring and y'all may notice this, I think, like we talk about, whether it's family members taking things for granted. Mm -hmm. Last year, we lost spring football, and we had to come in in waves in the summer mm -hmm. and not be able to be in the weight room at the same time, those kind of things. We took that kind of atmosphere for granted. Mm -hmm. And what I saw from us after getting through this season, and we did a remarkable job of hanging in there and being prepared, mm -hmm. whether it was going to be a game or not a game, but once we got into spring practice, I think I saw you guys, a light come on and say, 
We didn't have this a year ago, and we almost mm -hmm. lost it. We weren't even sure we were going to have a season. And I saw so much enthusiasm, so much energy. And you didn't take those days like, oh, we got to practice again. You're appreciative to have it back in your life. That's being grateful. Just like the weight room here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know we're still working in, in groups, not yeah. because of, the, of anything, but we always go in groups and, yeah. you know, together. Mm -hmm. But it's like we were away from each other so long, and it's always difficult to develop that team camaraderie and those kind of things when you're not together all the time or most Especially of the time. Especially in this sport. Yeah. Nope. You need that. You need to be around all the guys and stuff. And I think that's definitely one thing that I noticed in spring we're a lot closer. Like I said, like yep. we're getting back to how it was. You know, if you were mature, people understand what we're trying to do here. We're trying to win. You know, we're trying to get back yep. to the ways around here. Everybody everybody locked in. You mm -hmm. know, everybody understand what we got to do here. So uh, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen for sure. So. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Like I say, so many times we're passing the hallways and high-fiving each other. I'm agitating, aggravating. You know, I tell you, I don't like him, but I love you. Yes, sir, all the you time. You know what I'm saying? That's my old daddy saying yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. My daddy's always tell you, there's things you're doing I don't like, but I'll always love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being, being mischievous, those kind of things. Yes, sir. But this has been a pleasant uh, night for me. Yeah, I really true. enjoy it because you know how much I feel about you guys. Yes, sir. Uh, and obviously, like I say, things I took for granted was my playing career and coaching career would never end, but it did. And like I say, I'm involved, like you talk about, in operations and making sure things are going right and those kind of things. I'm just appreciative to be a part of it, and I appreciate mm -hmm. you guys letting me be a part of your, your life. Yes, sir. Appreciate and, you. And uh, it's like Coach Doc says, it's never too uh, down the road, always able to call us. I know we Absolutely. can always call on you guys. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Anything else you guys got? No, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, let's good. go I get them. Yes, sir. Pleasure, baby. Yes, sir.